Hey everybody, it's Sterling here, um, representing for Sterling Cart. Anyways, um, I'm just slowly getting back into the flow of drawing stuff. I'm now shifting my time instead of just drawing in the like pretty much late. Now I'm trying to draw like in the morning going into the afternoon. So then it just leaves the rest of my day set. Uh, but that's just a personal thing. Today we are working on my uh, production stuff. I'm, I'm currently working on a comic and I'm getting some character production stuff. I've already made the short before, which you can find the link. It's called Cursed. And well, this um, comic that I'm working on right now, along with the character stuff, I'm doing all their redesigns and everything is going to be related to that short, but I'm calling it something else because I feel like uh, this current comic name that I'm calling it, it fits better, even though it's still in the similar essence. Um, but right now we're doing the dad, who is Silas. Um, he's the one that runs the coffee shop. And I just actually just wanted to show a little like uh, like tutorial on just how I color. And I will break it down. I, I, um, I will just show you how I got it here. And then we'll eventually get into how I like will just color this bad boy. Um, so when it came down to this drawing right here, so I started it off uh, pretty much... Um, with like a rough sketch. If I can just zoom this out, I'll move my little icon here. So I need to be moving around. Let me move it to the bottom left down here. So um, what I do is I usually kind of just um, bring in the sketch. I need to find a slot to place this. Uh, why don't we put him here? Put me here for right now. Um, so what it is, I, I got a sketch. I did the sketch and I pretty much just made him um, on my sketchbook and pretty much just dropped him into the PCC. This is why you see my other drawing here. This is gonna be his like warlock evil version that he has, but that's more, um, you know, for later stuff. Um, so how I did this was I sketched it in my sketchbook and then I got my scanner that I have, my Epson scanner, scanned it, put thumb drive in, transferred it over and pretty much took this drawing here. And if I show you it, I can click on this one here, this little layer, it's pretty much is white. So, all I did was just add a mul multiply layer here. So then at least it gives me the look of how it should kind of represent itself on the, the toned paper. And then I just pretty much slowly, slowly just, um, I of course duplicated it. And then I move it over and fix make the adjustments, which is what I did. I made the adjustments here by changing his, uh, his hands and just pretty much just making minor adjustments with it. I think I even moved his face a little bit. Um, but then from there, I started pretty much, wait, wrong way. I pretty much just started sketching or drawing, well, inking over it. And from there, that's just my process of just how I do stuff. I just, I kind of take a while. Some people do multiple layers with outlining. I lately, I've been trying to keep the outlines within one to two layers, just depending on what I'm doing. Uh, makes it where I have less layers and uh, lately I've been just doing files um, that are separated because lately I just, this is a technically gonna be like a character sheet. So I need like all the characters there. So then I can just export them um, in one file rather than opening and closing, opening and closing and doing all that whole process. I can just export them all in one file. Um, but so far I just outlined him and then I did another layer with his eyes and, and hair, which I will play with in a second. Um, but from here, this is where I'm going to color and I want to show you how I color. So I have a color layer here and I actually have my other sketches here as well with, with his palettes. Um, I usually try to keep the palettes around maybe like five, four to five. Um, that's just without the shades included. Um, just try to keep it simple. Um, so at least it's readable, you know what he looks like, and then he has his key colors there. And then when it comes down to like all the colors, that's when you can kind of just go crazy stylizing everything. And, and that's one of those things I, I, I try to do when it comes to even just painting or uh, drawing uh, in my sketchbook or anything like that. I, I try to keep the palette very simple and not too, uh, too much where I, I see some drawings that are, you know, 17 palette or 17 colors and it's just that's a big palette which you could do that it's fine it's no judgment but i try to just tone it down to the base colors and then from there the shades will just speak for itself so um let's get started because i've been uh, rambling for like two minutes at this point 
So um, let me close this part here. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn off this layer and just take these outline layers here. Oh, I should have. Let me go back. Let me grab grab this layer here. I'm going to move my drawing. And I'm going to pretty much just grab this bad boy here. If I can do that, I'm going to just grab that color here because that's going to be a skin. And then I can just uh, close it for now. And then I have color here. Um, when I usually color, um, I try to have it where it is um, what I used to do. I used to just keep the color layer um, split. So it would be like the skin would be a layer, the shirt would be a layer, the apron will be a layer, um, the shoes, everything. I usually kind of conjoin that, like keep them separated because I'm used to just color swapping. Um, but with me now having a palette that I have for this character, I'm just going to put it all in one layer, but for the most part, usually I don't do that. I just will make sure that every layer has its own thing just so I can make quick adjustments and it takes me two seconds rather than recoloring. So this is just one of those things that I'm going to be doing that I usually don't do. And, and I know some people, some artists too will um, love to have it grayed, like take the character and then gray them out and then have them solidify it. I can do that as well, so I can show you that. It's actually an easier process too. So um, actually I'll do that. So let's uh, let's actually start off with that. So we're just gonna do the, the simple way rather than trying to color it singularly. Uh, when you do this process, um, I like to have like a nice bluish gray so I can kind of see it. Kind of in that realm. All right, so what I do is I, I don't, try to color it where some people try to color their, their characters and they feel they have to do this whole like thing you can do that if you want that's fine um i don't do that because i it's my wrist I'm getting older and using my wrist too much is just not working with me so what i'm going to do is just i can zoom it in or i can just kind of use my lasso tool and then lasso around it and this is just like something to get the idea going because this isn't going to be the final like colors. This is just me making sure that I got everything. And, and I can just kind of section it. And then when I do the real colors, I can always make the adjustments and fix them. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just one of those things where it's like, hey, here it is. And see, look at that. Perfect. Rather than just coloring and doing strokes, like I can make little fixes real quick and then go right back into the last tool. Which for me lately, I've been coloring like this for like, probably the past like I don't know maybe two two years three years doing this maybe yeah I want to say maybe two three years doing it this way and it just makes it easier on me especially my wrist and 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 all that so then at least um I'm not just kind of stroking across I can save the stroking for once I do shades or details or something like that where um once I get into the realm of shading that's where I'm gonna start doing blends. And my use of blending is more like painterly in a way. Um, but for this, this should be just like minimal effort. Like you just, you're just going around the drawing again. If you see things that you don't like, you can always make adjustments or, or make quick fixes. But from here, it's really just supposed to be just kind of stress-free and just kind of just boom, quick and easy. And I can always erase that portion there. I can erase that. And then let me just go in there. I'll just kind of just fix this. I'll erase that later. I just need I just need all the parts solidified. And then let me go here. I'll start at the foot since that looks easier. Kind of just go to this tool. Boom, boom, boom. Down to the bottom, get all that last loop up. And done. And that's just a part of it. I can always kind of just go up, go get that, go down, bam. Yeah, like see, like here I'm kind of using the brush tool, but at least with me using it, it's just me making sure that the strokes are direct. And if I know like like the angles of it, I can just color it myself, where at least it saves me time trying to color everything. I and mean, I don't have to lasso to everything. It's just one of those things where it's like, hey, if you got big chunks of color that you you, you gotta like get into, i rather it just be like, you know what, saves you time rather than just 
coloring and then you know command Z 27 times you can just fix it in the iteration boom 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 there we go I can go back on here even though I think I'm gonna erase this part anyway but it doesn't have to be perfect so here it is it's all colored in so from this point here I can do one of two things I could Duplicate it if I want, if I really just want to keep it as like an underlay or an overlay for the future. Or I can just color on top of this and like a selection and do it that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, pretty much keep that as my like my base. And then I will uh, pretty much create another layer color. This will be my real one. I'll just put like I usually name my stuff like color or color two or whatever. It just lets me know what it is. And then from there, I can uh, get into the real colors here. So now I got to look at the palettes. I know this is the skin tone right here. So I'm going to grab that skin tone there. And I'm just going to just either, I can just color on top if I want to, you know, color on him. And I can just keep it like a big color. I don't have to like make it perfect. I can kind of just do it that way. Kind of like, makes it pointless sometimes when like you're coloring but at the same time it's like i'm either going to color it and try to be within or outside the lines or i just kind of you know make it easier where at least i can make a mask or a selection and just do it that way it, it, there's no right or wrong way it's just every artist is different i see it as and whatever way works for you do it that's that's just how i see it it just shouldn't be like a tedious process. It should just be like a process of like, hey, I got this part done, perfect, boom. And then you just you just fix it from there or, or do whatever you do from there. It shouldn't have to be this whole um, thing where you're like conflicted or having a rough time with coloring. I feel that if you're kind of having a rough time, it, it just, you know, you just gotta keep practicing. Keep practicing, you get better at it. So I think that's all his skin tones that he has there. So now I can just go for the next selection or I can clean it up. I'm gonna save the cleanup for last. So at least we can just keep it like concise and we just know what new color to do. So now I can go to this pink here, go back here, I'll close that. And then this will be a selection again. And what we're gonna do, we'll just color over his. Wait, wrong color. I noticed that right away. Wrong layer. I'm gonna go like that. Boom. And he has like a pink on. So for the dad, um, he's just a his character trait. He's pretty much like, in a way, some some people might say like, you know, it, 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 technically when I created him, it was like it's like oh, is it like a character insert? And like yeah and no. When I made this short. I was um, working on it in a class. And when I was making it, um, it was pretty much just uh, to be like relevant to like me growing up and having a, a single mom, you know? And, and then me being a coach for swim, I kind of had gained that same knowledge and wisdom from my mom uh, coaching like pretty much a high school team, girls, a girls high, high school swim team. So when I made this short, it was pretty much an influence of like of my mom and of course me being the coach that I am. And the dad in this in this uh, short is kind of representative of not only my mom, but of myself and like just just the traits that he has in order to try and be like a better uh, father figure to his teenage daughters. Um, but yeah, so here it is. I have the t-shirt colored in. It's pretty simple. I, you saw me go back and forth with the skin and everything else. That's kind of why I always try to like keep it sectioned so I don't ever have to worry about it. But since I'm putting it all in one layer and I know some people do it in one layer, it's just one of those things where I'm coloring it and I'm not really like making it a big deal. Um, next, we're going to color this apron. So I got this color here. I'm just going to just go right on top and just color that. Boom. Just get some sections. I'm gonna color it this way. Uh, usually I don't color like this. I usually kind of um, will just lasso tool it. Cause to me, it's like, like I said, I'm getting older. 
especially when trying to get like base colors down. I'd rather just it be like, hey, it's one stroke or drawing across and boom, I just get it all done like that. And, and it saves me time and it, it allows me to like almost kind of like understand how I drew the outline. And 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 in and in ways it makes you it makes me like whenever I try to draw or do stuff like simplify things a little bit more for myself so I'm not over reliant on like jagged edges or or whatever I don't know I, I my my process in outlining is just so out there sometimes and I'm just I just know that I'm usually always thinking like seven steps ahead when outlining I always know that it's me having to go back and knowing that I have to fix certain things or whatever. And I know that it's always me kind of just um, talking with myself in order to like get the best result for myself. Because when I draw, I usually have like the, the image in my head and I know what it looks like. And it's always me just trying to get it as close as possible and, and, and if something doesn't look the way how I want it, I will sometimes just go back and just make those adjustments and make it necessary or do whatever I can to get it close to how I imagined it. Or I just, you know, scrap it all together, redraw it till I get it right and then go from there. Um, so for this, these are his pants. These, his pants, I have two options. I have two, two things I do. I usually either go like a black or I can go, I try to keep it the same color as his hair. So I can go a black or I can go a light gray that I have in the other sketch. But I think I'm just going to use the same black here and just keep it simple because usually I, I try to keep his design very, 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 very simple. I'm, a, I'm all about simplicity when it comes to palettes. Like I love palettes that are, are all crazy with 27 colors. Um, but with me, I, I, I try to keep it as like simple as possible. I'm gonna drop the opacity so I can see the outlines on it. Uh, it'll be a sign of me, maybe I have to make, make it dark, maybe make it lighter. But also I don't really care about his visuals on his pants because his pants are gonna be kind of like a flat look to it because I kind of want his pants to look flat. So I'm just gonna go here, overlay this part. I just always know I have to be a little careful. So we're just outlining the stuff here and get up here. Boom. So I got the legs almost done. I know I got his socks I got to do too. But his socks are going to be like probably uh, the same palette as a shirt or the same palette as his apron. I was thinking about making sure the socks were black, but I think that would be just too much black and then it would be hard to read. Or not hard to read, but it would just be like, like aesthetically for him as well. It would just feel like I would want something more from him rather than just like black socks. So from here, I could probably even make him like pink if I want to, like his little like light pink shirt. Um, okay, so I have everything set here. Now I can brighten it up. So yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly how I want it to look. Where it's just, it, you can tell it's legs, but it's all in the same palette and it looks flat. Just how I want it to look. Okay, perfect. Okay, so for his socks, I can do one or two things here. I can, I can either pick another color, color swatch, or I can pick, um, like, you know, pick another color swatch, which is already used, which is either the brown, this pink, this, um, it's kind of like a turqu turquoise or aquamarine, um, or I, um, or I make another color just to accommodate his style. Uh, why is this thing ignore? 
Uh, I keep getting my friend requests on the Epic Game Store for some reason. Um, so I could do one of two things here. I think I'm probably just going to keep it. I kind of want to keep it, keep it aesthetically pleasing to him. So why don't we, why don't we keep it, why don't we keep it pink? We'll do a pink sock. Or we can do this. We can do a pink and green sock. So then at least it matches his outfit all together. It's going to be a little gaudy in my opinion, but I can see him wearing like socks that look like that, like striped socks of that tone. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to have it pink. Even though I can see him wearing like multicolored socks or like uh, not, well, yeah, like different colored socks where both socks are two different colors too. Um, I used to do that. But we're going to do that. And then we can just give him stripes. We can do one of two things. We can either um, color it in ourselves, or we can just use the lasso tool here since this isn't too much of an effort. I can just color it. Um, just make sure that I don't break those boundaries too much since those are kind of far out. I can do that, boom. Like that, it looks, it looks okay. Something like that. It's not perfect, but it's something, something of this essence. I can see him wearing socks that are this ridiculous. He's a dad. I see him being like a little extra. All right, so we got that. Got that here. Boom, boom, boom. And all set. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. This, it looks it looks god awful, but you know what? It's something that I can see him wearing socks like this, and and he would be like, yeah, they're my my patterned socks for some reason. I don't know. I just I just I just base it off the character here. Okay, so now we can go to this face. Um, there's two options here with the face that you can do. You can keep it in the same layer if you want. Or you can create another layer and do a face layer. I usually do a face layer because um, I feel that's most comfortable with me. Um, but I know some people just like to keep all the colors in one layer. So I'm just going to keep it as, um, as a different thing. Um, just force of habit. Because this is all the base color now. And this is me slowly getting into like details now. Um, so I can just... Um, Go one way or another with this. So I can either, you know, some people like to make it white, some people might like to make it yellow. Lately, I've been kind of trying to keep it like off white. Um, I don't know. I have my moods when I color eyes. I can make it where it matches more. Um, but I think this time I'm gonna keep it white because I just like I like it. It's more tunistic. Tunistic in the aesthetic and it fits. Um, so let's do this. So I'm going to just grab here. I usually have like some colors I usually look. So when it comes to just coloring a face or, or drawing a face, it's, it's, it's kind of just more based on like how you want that face to look or how do you feel that face represents that character. Um, that's where it's, it shouldn't be too difficult. This should just be more of like, a, okay, how do you want the mouth to look or how the tongue to look, you know? Make sure that they have good hygiene or do they have bad hygiene or something like that. I feel like, you know, they're kind of, he's a, he's a, he's a sorcerer. So I, I expect him to kind of have like, you know, manageable teeth. So there we go. So he's looking good. And now I can do, I could do another thing. I can either. Uh, start shades here or or just use a palette for um, his beard. Lately, I've been trying to um, have a color for his beard. Uh, just makes it easier when it comes to shading. So like I know he has this palette for his beard here. So let me collect that. I'm going to go back to the color part here. And then I'm just going to just color this part here. I will just 
start it off, kind of just know how a beard works. I kind of have a beard. I have like a, a scruffy little beard though. This guy has like more like a five o'clock shadow and just have it more like that, you know, give it, make him look more daddy in ways. And I feel, that's it. I feel that works. It actually works really well. That's a nice looking beard. I'm getting better with, I feel I'm getting slightly better with beards. Yeah, give him that five o'clock shadow look. He gives him some age. All right. So from here, I can now start shading because this is this is how I usually color the bases of everything. It's very simple, fairly quick. It shouldn't be much of a like, it shouldn't be a struggle trying to do. It's just enough to get the base colors down. And I can almost be like, I'm done. I'm done here. Like I don't have to color anymore. But knowing me and how I color, I want to push this a little further. So now I'm going to get into shades. There's multiple ways of doing shades here. Um, uh, lately, I've been doing more like color shades. Uh, so like the highlight is not quite white. It's more of a like yellow or a something that matches the color of the background. Or I pick like something that fits more of the aesthetic. Or if I'm in the real big mood of just being painterly, I paint it. Um, for this, I feel I want to stick to just... Um, let me look at the old old stuff. Let me look at the old stuff. I know the old stuff is slightly different, but I'm trying to keep it to that aesthetic because I do have stickers in my in my Etsy store, and I'm trying to keep the style to looking like that. Hold on, give me one second. I'll text my girlfriend because I got to pick her up right now. Okay, so let me look at this style here. If my phone can load. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me look at it. Because sometimes I, I color certain ways. I have my moods of just color. Okay, so I'm going to stick to that aesthetic of uh, adding highlights. Okay, so I got like a couple more hours. So what I'm gonna do here, let's do the fixing. Let's do the fixing before I jump into the shades. I need to do some quick fixes, just small quick fixes. So then at least they don't get in the way of everything. Okay, I can fix that. Oh, I didn't even color his bracelets at all, but I'll save that. Oh, well, I'm gonna make his bracelets black anyways. I can do that right now. Sorry, my girlfriend's messaging me. Bah, boop. Okay, let's get over here. Let's try and add that color here. So then at least that keeps it simple and it doesn't get in the way. But I always try to keep everything fitting inside the palette that's already given or arranged that I have for the characters. To me, it just feels like it makes the coloring process simple and you're not going through like palette swatches or going through your little palette circle, trying to find like, oh, what color works? Or what color is this? Or what, what, what works best, you know? And I know we artists kind of get a little extra thinking of like what colors work, but sometimes it's, it's best to just have those colors associated. And, and to me, it's the, you know, just keep it simple. Like my old principal used to say, keep it simple. If you keep it simple, it makes everything less stressful. And then the whole process goes by so fast because you really don't have a whole lot. And I love seeing artists that use like, oh, that really do push the palettes. But, but it is also at the same time, like it is a lot of work. And it's, hey, if you're that artist that wants to do that, just, you just know you gotta, you gotta take it in and know that like, oh, I got like 20 other sets of blue and I gotta put it all there. But if Kind of know that like hey i'm using five colors it's simple you don't really have to do too much so there we go i'm gonna save this real quick always save always save y'all you gotta save your, your drawings all the time okay so here it comes to the freaking um other stuff here so okay shading so shading is is a two-way street of just things that you can do you can either go crazy with it if you want or you can kind of go simplistic 
Um, all right, so I'm gonna end this video here for right now. I'm gonna have a part two for shading because I feel like shading is gonna be a whole other thing I have to do. And I will uh, leave it at that. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And then the next video will be the shading video. And that's where I can really go into shading. All right. So hope I see you all next time. Bye.